Hello you lot, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to do another regional speciality that you might not have ever heard of. I'm going to make a Bedfordshire clanger. Before we start, shout out to my new Patreon fan, John Trina, 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 and also a shout out to It's All Just an Illusion, who thinks that you lot should be called Team You Lot, and I quite like that, so I might nick it. Now, Bedfordshire Clanger was requested by Sue Miller quite a while ago, and also recently by Banjax66. Now, I've yeah, well, I've, I've heard of them, um, and but you know, as I said to Banjax sixty <laughs> six, I I suggested it might be just a poor man's Cornish pasty. To which he replied, "If you ever come to Bedfordshire and say that, I will slap you round the face with a soggy Yorkshire pudding." Quite right too. Anyway, so I've been doing a bit of research, and and in a way it is like it's it's conceptually the same as a cornish pasty it's a working man's dinner in a pastry crust you know a couple of hundred years ago the pastry would have just been flour and water you wouldn't eat it it wouldn't be nice to eat it's just a handle or a container for the filling so there'd be a meaty filling in one half or two thirds and then there'd be a sweet filling in the other bit which is quite clever as long as you know which end is which if you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, become a patron, make a donation, etc. And without further ado, let us drop a clanger. For my savoury stuffing, I'm going to do pork and cider. So I've got some pork fillet, I've got a small onion, a glass of cider, a sprig, a couple of sprigs of thyme and some fresh sage leaves. I thought, but <laughs> the pork, I just happened to get some pork fillet because it was uh, discounted and that'd be nice and tender, but uh, any kind of um, pork shoulder, some bits of pork chops, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then the sweet filling I'm going to do is uh, apple and cinnamon and sultanas, which will go perfectly with that. So nice, complete, well-rounded meal. I wonder if I could get some soup in there as well. Now peel and finely chop your onion. Then we need to chop the, the pork into smaller than bite-sized pieces. There we go. Chop the chop, 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 chop. The uh, magic knife doesn't work on meat. And I think if you've got any uh, big chunks of fat on your meat, normally I'd recommend you keep them on. But as it's going to be going inside a clanger, probably not a great idea, so get rid of it. So um, <laughs> people of a certain age will remember a kids TV show from the early 70s called The Clangers about some knitted space aliens who lived on a planet far far away and were very silly. It's a bit of a, a cult thing now. I couldn't stand it at the time but uh, now that I'm a bit more mature I probably would enjoy watching that now. So you want the fat or oil of your choice heating on medium heat and when it's warmish throw in the onion and let that cook for uh, about five minutes till it's soft. You don't want it to go too brown, but a little, a little bit brown is okay. And then add the meat and get that browned all over. And then add the cider and the thyme leaves and the sage. If, if you had fresh sage leaves, you would want to roll them up like a cigar and then chop them finely. So let that simmer away. You want the meat to cook till it's tender. And uh, the liquid, the cider, should reduce to just a couple of uh, teaspoons and then give it a taste. You will want to add some black pepper and maybe some salt. Right, that definitely needed a little bit of salt and also some Worcestershire sauce or as we say in Yorkshire, endos. And um, stir those in, take it off the heat and let it cool down to room temperature. Right, now I'll make the sweet filling. So I've got a couple of apples, a handful of sultanas, half a stick of cinnamon, the juice of half a lemon, and a bit more cider. So the apples, these are Brayburn eating apples. Any kind of eating apple will do. Um, what I don't think you want is uh, a cooking apple like a Bramley, because they just turn to mush 
So peel and chop the apples and a couple of tablespoons of demerara sugar. So if you have a cora, you could use that, otherwise just cut around the core and cut your apple into little bits. Pop them in a saucepan and squeeze some lemon juice over them and add the other ingredients, the sultanas. Oh, these, these might be currants actually, <laughs> there's no ladle on the tub. Uh, the, the cinnamon. sugar and the cider. We'll pop that on the stove and simmer it for 5-10 minutes till the liquid is somewhat reduced. Now we need to make the pastry. It's a suet pastry which is the kind of thing that's used in jam roly-poly and in steamed puddings. It uses suet which is uh, pellets of fat from around the kidneys of the beast and um, I know in a lot of the world you can't get it. Uh, you could try and get that online, um, but if if you're struggling, you can freeze butter or lard and grate it, and then toss them in flour to keep the pellets separate. But um, you know, whatever. Right. So I've got 350 grams of self-raising flour, 85 grams of suet, 60 grams of cold grated butter, one egg teaspoon of salt and 150ml of cold water. So we pop the salt in, stir that well, and then we'll add the butter. And you want to rub that in till it's a bit like breadcrumbs. Just use your fingertips, don't use the, the palm of your hands because that will melt the butter before it's time. <laughs> and the pellets of suet. Then we'll add our egg. And the water. Stir that all together till we get a nice dough. That's way too dry, <laughs> way too dry. I'm gonna add some more water, like right, maybe about another 100 ml. So that's that's a whole cup of water. That's more like it. Now we need to knead it a little bit. Just to uh, get the old gluten going. So there we've got a nice smooth ball of dough and um, I'll just chuck it in the bowl and cover it and stick that in the fridge to rest for half an hour while I do the same with a cup of tea. <laughs> okay, here's the dough. So I'm just going to, I think I'll, I'll do two clangers out of this. Um, they, you know, they are quite long, they're about a foot long. But all the recipes I've seen, they, they say uh, a centimetre thick, nearly half an inch, which is, uh, well, seems excessive to me. Okay, so there's usually a little bit of pastry inserted as uh, a divider. So I'll just do that. And then we'll do our savoury filling on this side. The fillings um, vary tremendously. You can basically do anything you like, unlike a Cornish pasty. So, you know, curry or, or uh, chilli or liver and onions apparently used to be popular. And then I'll pop my sweet filling in this side. And we'll wet the edges with some water. And fill the pastry over like a sausage roll. Make sure you seal the ends nice and tightly so you don't so your filling doesn't escape. Right, don't ask me how I got the clanger onto this um, silicone sheet. It wasn't easy. But you, you'll need a lot of flour to stop it sticking, even though it's silicone. But not that much, because I need to paint this with uh, egg wash. 
So while this is going on, you want to get your oven preheating to 180 Celsius if it's a fan oven, convection oven, or 200 if it's a conventional one, and that's gas 6. Now we need some holes in the pastry to let the steam escape, and we need a way to tell which is the sweet end. So I'm, I'm hoping I'm not twizzled it round and that this is still the sweet end. So I'm just going to make these marks on it so, so we've got a clue. There we go. So we whack that in the oven for 40 to 45 minutes till it's lovely and golden. Ooh, hey. <laughs> Goodness me, they look a bit spectacular. Uh, that one's got a nice split in it, and that's got a hole in it, and um, yeah, wow. So I think these need to cool down a little bit before we do the taste test. So amazingly, they do actually hold together. Uh, I thought that would just break in half because it's so gigantic, but no. Brilliant. And now it's taste test time with Mrs. Keith Cooks. AKA <laughs> hey. her indoors. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, maybe you should point out it's actually first thing in the morning because we ran out of time last night. So we're not completely with it. Anyway, uh, I have here two Bedfordshire clangers. Hell's teeth. Um, I said to Keith yesterday. <laughs> Oh, lovely, and I'll take one of those for lunch tomorrow. <laughs> May, maybe a, a cross section. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Fresh out at Toven. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's supposed to be hand held. Yeah, I know, but by the time you get to it at lunchtime, mm. in the mill or in the factory or in the farm, it wouldn't be mill, would it? I like farm workers. Yeah. Ban Banjax? Has Banjax got a number? 66. Banjax 66. I guess that means he was born in 1966. Uh-huh. The last time England won the World Cup. Mm. Yeah, what about him? Keith's been editing this morning, so I could hear him. <laughs> With Banjax 66 threats to life. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Mm. Mm. I'll tell you what. I'm having that. You don't know. Oh boy! Mm. Oh, it's that pastry. Oh, I love it. Mm. It's also also known as a Herefordshire clanger, um, or a Charlie dumpling. Charlie being a hamlet where they made these things. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, so you can fight about that in the comments. I'm not interested. Uh -huh. Plus, of course. Mm. This is a variation, isn't it? I don't know what guys would have had to, guys and girls would have had to take for their lunch in the past, but um, Keith's done one of my favourite things, which is um, he does this pork cooked in cider gravy, <laughs> really reduced and deep flavour. I've rambled on about this before, I know it's gorgeous. So, yeah, take your favourite thing and wrap it in pastry. What's not to like? Okay, dessert. Yeah. Yeah, pudding. And I just love apples. Mm. Right, I'll put that down. Oh, I've got all the sultanas. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Okay. Mm. I'm a genius for what? Um, You're a bit good. <laughs> so, all those people forcing me to make a Bedfordshire clanger against oh, my will. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, having to do a taste test first thing in the morning. There are mm. worse ways to have to start your day than with a Bedfordshire clanger breakfast. <laughs> I bet you could put bacon and eggs in there and that mm. as well. Anyway, right. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. Stay mm. safe. Watch out for that bloody virus. Mm. Um, mm. And... Mm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> and... See you next time. It's too early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that pastry is fantastic. Uh -huh. Oh, a 
amazing. <laughs>